chapter 6 is right there printed for you. This is the, the NIV translation. It says, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Uh, I want to walk you backwards and uh, my brother mentioned this in, in the last part of chapter number five, where we were last week, Paul talked about the fact that we were ambassadors. And if we remember what we've been talking about from chapter one through, we're seeing Paul says, God has given me this ministry, right? He says, hey, I'm just this jar of clay, but what's inside of me is what's valuable. Then he talked about the fact that I'm just a, a tent. We're just tabernacling here for a period of time. But we have this ministry. We have this message. And he said that message is that in the last part of chapter 5, that we would be reconciled to God because Jesus Christ came and reconciled us back into relationship with the Father. And he says we need to be reconciled with God. So the carrier over that message at the end of chapter 5, the carrier over that message that we've been talking about where Paul is defending himself against the Judaizers, where he's defending the fact that he is not in fact weak because he's been through all these trials and he's still standing. He, didn't, he doesn't have papers from Jerusalem because God called him to this ministry. So he says, by the way, Philippians, the way that, excuse me, the Corinthians, the way that you are acting, many of you are acting like, like you don't know God. So he says, today is today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to get to know Christ. And I, I want to say that to everyone sitting un, in, under the sound of my voice. And this is not new, anything new to our congregation. This is something that we talk about all the time. That you would know Jesus Christ. Amen. That you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to come to church, but it's more than just coming to church. Amen. So... If I make this invitation again, and we'll make it at the end again, if you have questions about your salvation, if there's any question that you have, let's spend some time together. Let's go over the scripture together. Salvation, we, we know Jesus paid the price for our salvation. And this is a record God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Today, today is today. Now is the time of salvation. Don't put it off. Amen. 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 Let's look at the second section. It says, uh, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way in great endurance and troubles and hardship and distresses and beatings and imprisonments and riots and hard work and somebody say sleepless nights sleepless and nights. hunger and purity, understanding, patience and kindness in the Holy Spirit and in severe love. I want to ask you guys a question. And I've heard this before, and I know you have. How many of you believe that all that pastors do is preach for 30 minutes on Sunday? No. <laughs> no. How many of you believe that you just preach for 30 minutes for, on Sunday, and in some churches you have a parking space out front and you have your own office? <laughs> <laughs> so look with me at the top of the left-hand, right-hand page. It says, 
in this section, Paul is making an appeal for the Corinthians to appreciate what he does. Paul is making an appeal to the Corinthians to appreciate what he does. This passage gives us the impression that the Philippian church did not really appreciate Paul for the work he had done among them, and they should have been defending Paul rather than Paul having to write a letter to defend himself. Think about it. <coughs> Paul comes in, into Corinth and preaches the gospel in this crazy metropolitan city where all kinds of things are happening. And he comes and he preaches the gospel and he labors with them, him and his team, that they might know Christ and become a church. He writes them this first letter and he gives them all these instructions about how to take communion and how to love each other and, and all this information he pours into them and now he has to defend himself against the Judaizers. So speaking as a pastor, it feels a little funny. But it is possible that believers not appreciate their leaders. <laughs> so, this is how I want to go through it. I'm going to go through this, um, and I want you to write something. I want you to participate. Do you see the lines above, uh, the, the dark lines that are, seem to be blank? Yeah. Okay. So, in that first line, Paul, I have the heading, Paul's example. And then Paul talks about becoming a stumbling block. So, it says, bad examples of pastors and believers give unbelievers an excuse for rejecting Christ. Remember last week I told you that we are ambassadors and that you're an ambassador of this church and if you're acting crazy, don't tell them you go to New Seasons. <laughs> because what's the number one thing believers say? I don't want to go to that church because it's full of hypocrites. And we say, come on, one more won't hurt. <laughs> come and be with us. So Paul said, hey, I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody. Because a great part of your witness is not just the words that you say, but how you live your life. And Paul says, I, I've never been a stumbling block but to you. Listen to Romans chapter 14 verse 21 in the ESV is right written there. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or underline, do anything that causes your brother to stumble. Yeah. Somebody? Amen. 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 So on the first line underneath that writing, of bad examples, write these words. What he did. So, what he did. Skip down to the next line, and I want you to write how he did it. So the first line, what he did. What did he do? He, he endured. He went through troubles and hardship and distresses. He worked hard. There were sleepless nights. And he said, I was even times where I was hungry. So what he did was that first line. How he did it. And then in the next line, I want you to write how he was treated. So what he did, how he did it, how he was treated. And here's a, here's, here's, a, here's a cap, cap to it all. That last line, why did he do it? <coughs> he did it because he loved them. In his last paragraph, in that last line, verse number 11 says, We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and open wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but we are withholding but you are withholding yours from us. So he says, 
I'm not, I, I'm not hope, withholding any affection from you. We love you. And that's, what we, that's why we do what we do, because we love you. We, we love God's people. Amen. Do you see it in the text? So let's talk about these first ones. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a few definitions here. First one, he says, uh, with great endurance, or we could use that uh, the word patience. How many people know that you have to be patient with God's people? Amen. I'm, I'm like Moses. God, I don't want to take another step unless you're going with me because these are your folks. Moses said, I didn't birth any of these crazy folks out here, but you got me out here leading them. Oh, boy. So we need great impatience. And it says that word could also mean you don't quit when things get rough. Amen. I, I, I don't know the, I, I, I hear a lot of different statistics. And I'm not sure which ones are true or false or accurate, but I do know this, that a great number of pastors leave the ministry every single month. Yeah. Can I just bring a little bit of myself out? Y'all can get off someone's last nerve. When Paul was in the chapter 11, he says, I, I've been through this, I've been through uh, in the water, I've been in the sea, I've been beat, I've been in danger of countrymen, in danger of, of, of robbers. And he said, then I still have the responsibility of dealing with y'all. I'm dealing with the churches. <laughs> I, 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 I shared this with someone the other day, and I don't think they quite understood what it meant. But my grandmother used to say this, a handful of give me and a mouthful of thank you, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. We live in, 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 what's that little rock, uh, rock of horrors or whatever that little movie was called? Feed Me Seymour? Yeah. 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 We want to be fed, yeah. but we don't want to give back. Yeah. And whether you support or not, I still have to love you and, and help you and bless you because that's what God said to me. I know this sounds self-serving, but this is what the Word of God is saying. Paul says, I had great endurance. I went all through all kinds of troubles. So troubles are trials under pressure. Remember chapter 2, he says, I, I want to tell you about what happened to us in Asia. And he said, I thought we were going to die. But God showed up. So that we wouldn't depend upon ourselves, but we would depend on God. So he went through troubles that weren't distresses. Or hardships. It's, it, it describes someone being pushed into a corner with no escape. And then he says, there were beatings. Remember he said he got 40 lashes minus one. And then there, remember he spent time in prison. And then there were times where, there, there, where the, the, there were riots because they were trying to get to Paul. And then he says, a lot of hard work. Sleepless nights. And, he, and Paul says, uh, uh, there were times where I was uh, Ephesians, uh, no, excuse me, Philippians says, I know how to be a base in the King James. I know how to abound. I, I know that all, everything to be what? Content. Because mm -hmm. I know God, I can do all things through Christ. Paul says, I've been there at times where I had a great amount. I've had those times where I was hungry. Mm -hmm. So that's what he did. He did all of this for the sake of the gospel. Look at how did he do, how did how how he did it? What were the tools? What were the what were the how did what did he use to accomplish what we talked about what he did? How did how did he do that? It says he did it with purity. Right in your notes, morally clean. Morally clean. 
He said, I was pure. Uh, uh, I did it with understanding. I did it with, with a lot of patience. I did it with a lot of kindness. And I did it with not a fake love, but a sincere love. I did it because I spoke to you truthfully. That's one of those things today that is, uh, we were just talking about this um, recently. In this culture, you're not, you're not, they don't want you to speak the truth. Or you're hateful or bigoted. I don't even, sometimes I don't even believe believers want to, people that, let, let me say, church goers want to hear the truth. Paul says, in, these, in, in the last days, they're going to have those, what, itchy ears that want to hear fables. They want to hear craziness. So he says, I speak, I speak the truth, and I did it all in the power of God. And then he talks about the weapons of his righteousness. Remember in Ephesians 6, he says, put off the, the weapons. Or, uh, I said, the other one uh, says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So he says, the weapons that we have of righteousness... These weapons are derived from God, so we put on this whole armor that we can stand, that we can fight. Amen. Hmm. And then, I want you to notice how he was treated. So imagine, uh, have you, I don't know if you've ever seen this. This is something that used to float around the internet uh, years, years ago. It was a Paul's resume. You know, this, a, a guy seeking a pastorate that has been in jail, has been beat, has been shipwrecked, that used to be uh, on this side, now he's turned to this side. And, and the point was that if we would look at such a resume today, we probably would not expect to look like that person to be a pastor. <laughs> but for the Corinthians, for someone to come into your, into your city, to just preach the gospel with you, to, to endure these hardships, to go through all of this, why didn't you appreciate that effort? So he says here, what verse is that? Um, verse number eight, through glory and dishonor. On one side from from some, he might receive glory. He might receive accolades. He might receive praise for what he had done. But from those that he really loved, those that he labored for, there was dishonor. On some, some sides, there might be a good report about what he did. On other sides, there might be a bad report. It says genuine, yet look at those contrasts. I, I've always been genuine with you. I've always been real with you. But treated as if I'm an imposter. Uh, I'm known by some and loved by some in, in, in Corinth, but then there are those that treat me as if they don't even know me. He says, I've been through all these troubles. I'm dying, but I still live on. I've been, I've been beaten, but not killed. I've been in, in times of great sorrow, but I'm still rejoicing because God gives me this joy, even in the midst of these sufferings. He says, I'm poor. I love this one. He says, I'm poor. I, didn't, I, I don't have a lot of these earthly goods. But my ministry is to make others rich. Yeah. I'm poor, but I have, I have everything. I was reading this the other day. This is a side note. I, I, was, I was reading this just, just the other day. Uh, where God said to the priest in the Old Testament, I am your portion. You know what that means? Listen, when, when, when God spoke to Moses and God spoke to Joshua, he says, when you get over to the promised land, I want you to divide the, the, the land among the tribes. And each tribe gets a portion of the promised land. But to the priest, he says, I'm, I'm your portion. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. Paul says, hey, I don't have much earthly goods, but God is my, my portion. God is my, but he told the Philippians, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. How do you, sometimes I just want to ask you guys, how do you get excited?
excited? What are, what are you excited about? <laughs> what are you excited about? Tell me what you're excited about. Because I'm excited about the fact that, that God is my portion. <laughs> Greater is he in me. He that is in me that is he that is in the world that no weapon formed against me can prosper. I may not have earthly goods, but I got an inheritance. I got a home in heaven, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited that he gave me ministry on this corner in West Sacramento. Amen. Why did he do it? He did it because he loved them. I love God's people. I tell you that all the time. I love each I love y'all. I love this is what I do is not a burden because I love God's people. I love the assignment that he's given me. Amen. And when you know that you know that you know. You, you'll endure. Amen. He was an ambassador. We are all ambassadors. He did it because God gave him this ministry. God gave him this ministry of reconciliation, of bringing people back into fellowship with the Father. I want to do it just, I got two points of application. One, one is for me. That first one is for me. I want to be the kind of leader, the kind of pastor that's willing to endure what's necessary that the word of God might go forth. I want to be the kind of pastor that will uh, spend sleepless nights and work hard, whether recognized or not. Would somebody say amen? Amen. <laughs> Mr. Lyon said, that's the kind of pastor I want. Yeah. That's the kind of pastor I need. I thank God that God will send a pastor like that to us. Yes. Because if, if whatever you do, I, one day I want to hear him say, well done. Yeah. Good and faithful servant, you've been faithful. And then that first one was for me that I want to live and minister like Paul. The second one's for you. That you would appreciate, support, and love on those pastors that live and minister like this. Amen. 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 And I know one guy I'm, I'm thinking of. He's going to be with the Lord now. But he, his, his testimony was that he had a heart attack in ministry because all the burden and all the load was on him. Remember that little sign that we've seen on bumper stickers on people's desks? I love work. I could watch it all day. <laughs> <laughs> love, support, pray for, hold up. Oh, I got one of the verses I want to read before we have communion. The man of, man of God are the leaders that, that are. Listen to Hebrews. I, I, I'll give you this and we'll close. Hebrews says, Verse 13, verse chapter 13, verse 7 and 17 says, Remember your leaders who did what? Oh, if they're preaching the word. Remember if they preach the word. That spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of, the, of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Verse 17 says, Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority. 
because they keep watch over you as those who must. And I have to. And every pastor has to give an account for your soul. It says, do this so that their work will be a joy and not a burden because that won't be a benefit to you. Amen. Somebody say it's tight, but it's right. I know it sounds like a self-serving message. But in this section, Paul is appealing to them to appreciate him for what he's done. And so that he himself doesn't have to defend him, himself, but the people that he has loved on and ministered to would stand up and defend the work that he's done. I pray, Lord, for every pastor in West Sac, I pray for every pastor in the Sacramento region, God, that stands and proclaims your word, your gospel, that love on their people, that work hard, that endure. For the sake of the gospel, that you would empower them, that you would bless them, that you would, uh, that your favor might rest upon them. That the light of the gospel might shine in those communities. And people might come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Bless this church, God. Bless Westside Baptist. Thank you from the folks from, from Jeff, Jessup that were here this morning to bless us. May you bless their ministry. Somebody say, Amen. Amen.